Baking pancakes, making bacon pancakes. Take some bacon and I'll put it in a pancake. Bacon pancakes, that's what it's gonna make. Bacon pancakes. Bacon pancakes, making bacon pancakes. Take some bacon and I'll put it in a pancake. Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> and welcome, everybody, to our Daily Gun Show. We're going to be live every weeknight at... Midnight Eastern, that's 9 Pacific, for about an hour each night, we talk about guns. We've got a couple of people joining us in the, I'm going to call it a studio, even though it's just the internet. Uh, we got Dead Horse jumping in from Utah, thanks for joining. Howdy. And we got uh, Tatus jumping in from Michigan, thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Yeah. You guys jumped in from the Patreon link, I'm guessing, earlier. Uh, we opened it up about an hour early today for people on Patreon. Welcome to jump in, BS, ask questions, give us some feedback, and kind of see what it's like behind the scenes. Played around with uh, drawing a picture of a cartoon of Ellis today. And then uh, they're over there chatting about uh, some kind of man wrestling. But uh, it's Monday. It is behind the scenes day, so we're going to be taking a look at uh, two-way projects. We have a workshop coming up tomorrow. A. Uh, a. We're going to be talking about our member of the day, our gun shop of the day, uh, movie, and all the other things. But uh, before we dig in, we usually take a break at the beginning, see if anything happened over the weekend or overnight worth talking about. Anything? No? Um, I don't know. I've been so busy. I am so out of the loop right now on anything going out there on social media or I, I've just been so busy. I am. I have no clue. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, like someone could have went out of business and I would have no idea. So, yeah, that's really what it's like, right? if you're interested in something, you know, you take a casual interest in it or an interest, you know, deep interest, depending on what your life's like. Something happens, you, you're you not able to, or you're just not interested in following through on something. And then, uh, you know, depending on what it is, you might have to get back into it. So if it's something like remote controlled RC vehicles or something, and, you know, you, you bought equipment here and you got out of it for a few years because of some life situation, you get back into it a few years later and you're like, ah, I've got to buy all new stuff because technology has changed. I can imagine a m bunch of hobbies that are like that. You could spend a bunch of money and take a pause and get back to it. And I think because of that, people end up going, eh, if i got to get back into something, or if it's going to be that much work, I might as well just start something new, right? Except guns, that's not something we're casually into because we've got nothing else to do, or we like killing or violence so much that guns are the only way we can get our bloodthirst. We like guns for lots of reasons, including the Second Amendment, right? So that's why I think gun channels is important, places like this, because... Uh, I mean, I've seen it. We're about to hit our fifth year. You've been, you guys, have been around for a while, both of you, to see the ebbs and flows, the patterns, the what do you call it, trends? I don't know what to call it. Like people come around, they leave. Some people come and never come back. Some people come yeah, back. Yeah, I just did uh, my third year now. Like my third week. full, like yeah, my uh, my third full year just happened. I think it was yesterday. Right on. What, do you get some kind of email or something when that happens? No, uh, you. Uh, it automatically comes out of my PayPal <laughs> or the, the membership. Yeah. So uh, appreciate it. Twelve bucks is what it costs to be a member of Gun Channels. But like I said, it's really the, and that's keeps it up. There's no ads anywhere. I don't really beg for money for Gun Channels. Gun Channels members support it, and while it's not huge, and we don't have mobile apps or nothing that cost a million bucks, you've got a dude who can pretty much do anything on the internet, and I do it for nothing. I do it for not cost, right? We do it for, like, what I can rig it. We don't even have to buy stuff half the time. So um, we're doing it on the cheap, but uh, really the reason I do it, and like I was saying, the reason we've been, when you watch it for a while, is people aren't always into this stuff, right? They come back to it, and I feel like guns are important enough. The Second Amendment is cer certainly important enough, and the... Um, the, the, the community that the Second Amendment 
creates, that it fosters, the people that realize that as individuals, we need to come together at times to protect the community and the state. Even though the state sucks, we don't want it to be you know, coddled and nurtured and grown, but we do know that it needs to be resisted against and defended every once in a while, right? So I think Gun Channels is an attempt to make that a little easier for people to get back into it once in a while. So it's awesome when you're gone for just a few days, you're pretty active, but I'm sure there's other people. We have 6,000 members. And I mean, we get 30 million or excuse me, 30,000 views a day on the slow months. So that's Well, that's what's so great about Gun Channels is that I, I'm out of the loop. I'm super busy. I come back in like some drastic two-way news could have happened, whatever. Well, I get that news like, you know, right away on gun channels. Like I come in, people are talking about it. They're already talking about it, debating it, you know. Well, yeah, so. Hopefully more importantly, though, you know that there's nothing important going on because there's no raise and call over at gun channels, right? If, if there was something going on, you know about it. But more importantly, you can know everything's good to go because there's so many eyes out there looking in so many directions. We're all alert each other when something's going on. So when it's relatively calm, you can go check out Gun Channel's main page is calm. All right, good. We're in a good time right now, right? Yeah, exactly. That too. I mean, yeah, exactly. And it's, uh, yeah. And that's what's great about Gun Channels is that lets me know exactly that. Whether if I go on vacation for a week or whatever, I come back, boom, I can catch right back up and know what's going on or what hasn't happened, you know? <laughs> Right well, we're seeing a lot of um, people changing jobs, it looks like. So good to hear Lockjaw's got a new thing locked down. You know, I pun there. And uh, some other people I'm aware of over on the gun channels changing changing careers and whatnot. So that's awesome. Um, do you think that's a indication of an economy that isn't afraid of what's going to happen next from the state? Afraid oh. of kind of taxes looming over the future or afraid of like not being able to trade the goods they do make with anybody else? Oh, I think our economy is doing great right now. And it's this, and yeah, I mean, unemployment's at an all time low. Um, I mean, just like our economy is doing fantastic. Let's face it. Like it's, it's, and it's getting better every day. Like get the stock market, everything, everything's no. doing great. I know a lot of people like to give credit to gun channels for that, but you know, we'll just take that and move along. So, uh, anything gun related going on? Um, I know you've been working on your gun room. Sounds like you went from build mode to reload mode over the last day or so. I definitely have. I actually, uh, I'm out here right now on my gun bench. I basically got my uh, Lee Loadmaster press all set up. And I started loading 223 on it last night, and I loaded more of it today, and I even got my wife out here today loading on it. I posted a picture of that on Instagram of her reloading her own ammo. And now I'm going to teach the kids how to use it so the kids can reload their own ammo. And, uh, yeah, and then the whole family can come out here and use this and load 223 ammo whenever they're bored. <laughs> how far away, how far away, which room will you have between the press and your new wall when it's there? Is that going to be like you're going to back against the wall? I'm going to have from the press to the wall that's going to go there. I'm going to have, oh gosh, I have it here. I got to take my here. I'll tell you exactly. It's going to be 43 inches. Oh, four. Oh, four. Got plenty of room. Oh. Yeah, so it's going to be... I just wasn't sure because I know it's not the end of that table. And when you were kind of showing what the walls were going to look like, I thought maybe you'd be kind of like sitting in a corner there, but you'll have plenty of room behind you. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be about three and a half feet or so um, behind me of space to be between the press. So I'll have plenty of room to move my arm and move back there because I'm probably going to mount another press in that corner. And then I, I want to be able to use my vice right here and swivel my vice to each side, to the front of the table, to the side of the table to work on barrels. and Or, I mean, my vice, you know, I want to be able to do that. So, but that's what I got all my plywood in. And you can see the plywood back there. That's the plywood I went and picked up today. Um, yeah. That's all going in the attic. That ain't plywood. So, Chipboard. Or, or OSB, you know what I mean. I call it plywood. It's OSB. But, but this, uh, that's what I'm putting all my tubs on and stuff. All like all my Halloween and Christmas decorations and all that to make room in my garage. Humidity. You got humidity yeah. there? Because that stuff can swell if it's not treated. 
Oh no, I live in the desert. We have a we have uh where I live, we have less humidity on average than Death Valley. So it rains hard a couple times a year, and then it's dry the whole rest of the year. In that so. situation, I will allow it. You can continue on with your project. All right. So uh, that's potatoes. Got anything going on over there? Took the day off. Mm-hmm. No, not really, man. I just I wanted to get to the range today. Couldn't. All right, and so um, I'm playing around on, for me, I've been playing around on the uh, calendar. So check out uh, guncalendars.com. Pretty impressed. I've been uh, working on the 2A history. It's all coming, it's not all coming together like a final product, but uh, every once in a while when you're working on things in stages or, you know, sections or whatever, getting to be able to put a couple of sections together is awful satisfying. So uh, posted, I don't know, another 20 something items over there. We have over 700 items in the calendar. It's not quite every day yet. That's our goal to get something firearms related every day, but um, working towards that, you know, and it's a little bit of effort to get all the images and everything built. So we really appreciate the people over on Patreon who are uh, allowing that to even happen and uh, keeping them posted. And like I say, we had the uh, open room here tonight. We'll do that as often as possible, especially when I'm just doing art and stuff. So it's easy to open up the room and just uh, BS with whoever wants to BS. So I guess let's dig into the show. It's Monday. We kind of got into it a little bit with the behind the scenes stuff. But um, what the hell is this doing in this one? Because should mobile homes be considered residences? That has nothing to do with Monday. No. So we're going to move that to some other day. And then uh, we'll talk about building to a project. So we do have a workshop tomorrow uh, with the Minuteman University project. One of the goals there is to encourage people to create their own two-way content. And uh, can't even, I mean, I could go on and on for examples of people that are doing that in interesting ways and bring in the, uh, you know, just the two-way uh, mental, I don't know, point of view. I, I would like to know more about some of the diverse ways that people are doing projects. I mean, I think that's a good thing to, to hear. Mm-hmm. So um, I just kind of open it up as a two-way project workshop tomorrow, and I posted a uh, poll over on gun channels and put that out over on Patreon. Anybody that might be interested to give me some idea which time you'd rather do. I can do both times, honestly. And then uh, some feedback from people who might be interested in watching as well. It's not designed to be, uh, you know, I can't, there's no perfect time for these things. So I'm just going to do them on a semi-regular basis. And uh, I figured just doing a plain old workshop instead of doing it on a specific topic right yet, um, might just, like you said, bring some people in. I know you've got a couple of projects you're working on. Uh, other people all have their various projects in different stages, and sometimes it helps to just talk about it and get some feedback from people about it, uh, get it, you know, some direction and perhaps uh, hone in an idea or something, and then see what kind of resources people might have to offer or uh, point you towards. So uh, maybe we can help people if they've got any blocks or just any, uh, um, you know, issues where if you've got not enough arms or not enough eyeballs in the mix, maybe some people out there are interested in helping out too. So. We'll have some fun with that, and that'll be in the afternoon tomorrow. I'm looking out in the comments now if anybody has any uh, projects they're working on, or if you want to jump in tonight, feel free to jump in or ask for a link. We'll, we'll send you a link out there, and uh, I guess otherwise we'll dig into one of the topics of the day. So normally between our first and second topic, we would talk about the member of the day. We don't really have a first topic or a second topic, so I'll just do that now. And it's awkward because it's dead horse. So I did the uh, members of the day I don't know, a while back, and I just picked whoever was in the room, so you must have been in the room watching the show that night. Obviously, you're an active member of the Second Amendment community, and you do all kinds of things, and you share that on gun channels, and that's what we built it for. So appreciate your all the work and all the support. I mean, time-wise, financially, you really help out a lot. I don't think we could honestly say we wouldn't be here without you. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I'm just a guy who builds guns in his garage, right? And like, I like guns and I like to shoot and I like to, I like, wait, I, I like what I see you're doing and the place that you gave us and the knowledge that you've given to like me and I'm sure to so many other people on, you know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't even know how to start a Google Hangout. I couldn't even host something if I wanted to. And like, you know, I mean, my videos were so bad. The couple videos I did were so horrible, horrendous and stuff. And I've just learned so much um, just by listening to you guys talk about all sorts of different 
stuff that's you know relevant to the second amendment and to a thousand other things right oh. and uh but it, i've just learned so much from uh being on gun channels and being able to converse live with people and pick people's brains and finding you know dare i say experts or at least people really knowledgeable in specific fields whether it's like old school revolvers or mini pocket pistols or you know rifles or whatever it is but being able to talk to these guys who are really knowledgeable and, uh, and pick their brain live not like do it in a forum and not i don't know it's just i i feel like i get better info and it's more personal and just like setting up i set up a, i did a chat last night on gun channels where i was setting up my press and luckily we have an awesome member named russ carr who has five of the same press i was setting up last night so he was able to hop in on the chat give me a bunch of pointers right off the bat so i wasn't dicking around for 10 hours trying to set this thing up and he helped me set it up and get it working smoothly like right off the bat and that was all done because of gun channels you know and uh, if it wasn't for gun channels i probably would still be messing with the press right now trying to get it to you know work right so that's just one example <laughs> you know and i got a hundred more on how gun channels has helped me so it, it's just awesome for that i appreciate it so much yeah, and that was interesting watching you guys do that yesterday. And what's cool is that that's now a video on your channel and you do a lot of how-to videos so people know you're a resource. Hopefully you'll drag all those over to YouTube periodically so that they don't get stuck. I know you, that's one of your projects. And then, yep, yep. but like I say, it's our I have, I have been uploading on YouTube you know, too. The next person comes around can watch hours, literally the Q and A and yeah, it's really neat. I can't imagine the learning curve or the, 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 the way the learning curve is going to change for people going forward because you're going to have so much info to, to reference. It's pretty neat. And then, yeah, it's neat that you guys are out there being part of the beginning of all that role. You know, we're really still the beginning of all that. Yeah, yeah so and if you just – and the best thing I, – I still think the best thing overall about all – even though all the other stuff Gun Channels gives, the best thing I think is still just bullshitting about guns. Was just sitting there talking about what guns we shot that day, how they performed, what guns we like. I still think that when it comes down to it, to me, that's still one of the best the best things about gun channels is just be able to talk to like minded people about guns. Yeah, I was listening to doing that stuff today and doing some emails and stuff, and I was listening to a book on uh, tape, basically a Isaac Asimov robot book, and uh, or a story, I guess. And he mentioned something in the story about robots being dangerous. And that made me think, oh, snaps. I jumped and I paused everything for a second, jumped over. I knew there was a hangout going on, waited till they were done, you know, whatever conversation they were talking about, and just brainstormed with them a bit about the concept. If you're talking to somebody who's an anti and you, you, you say, okay, you, guns are dangerous, therefore they shouldn't be in the hands of ordinary people who aren't trained with them. Okay, great. So let's say we go down that road, then when do we stop with dangerous things? The knives are an easy one, but let's talk about cars. Let's talk about robots. Let's talk about future technology, drones. Let's talk about uh, food and things like at what point, you know, is somebody allowed to do their own uh, gene manipulation in their garage? Because that's certainly possible for a couple hundred bucks, it sounds. So, you know, at what point is dangerous things to be taken away from uh, free people? And I don't know if that's necessarily going to sell people's uh, or change people's minds in a conversation, but it was interesting to be able to stop there. And I knew I had a gun channel, so I could go, to, you know, and I was had a chat, I knew there was gonna be some people in there. And it was cool just to be able to know that's there and uh, take a second and quickly hash that out, throw it out there and then get back to work. Pretty cool. Yeah, there's been plenty of times where I had uh, questions about something or like, uh, crap, I need this part. I don't know where to get it cheap or whatever. And somebody had the answer or, or there's been times where I've been like, ah, damn, I ordered the wrong part or I ordered an upper I didn't need or whatever. And then somebody was around to be like, hey, I want it. I'll take it off your hands, uh, which kind of brings me to the next point. My next point, 24-7 gun show. That's an awesome resource we have now, too, um, <laughs> like eBay, except all, you know, stuff that guys who would be on gun channels would be interested in. So. Like I got my first bayonet ever, uh, like real bayonet ever off of 24 seven gun channels. So and an M seven bayonet. So like, that's awesome. Like mounted it on my a three and it like fit perfect. And like, that was my first real bayonet. So if it wasn't for 24 seven guns, 
uh, 24-7 gun show, I probably never would have even of uh, like ever bought a bee in it. All right. Well, since we're given, uh, we're all chatting about how great gun channels is, I'm going to let everyone know, since I don't do this enough, that we do have a couple of ways that people can help out with gun channels financially if you want. On the main page when you log in, if you scroll down past all the stuff on the left side, you finally get down to a Brownells ad and this Palmetto State ad. And both of those both of those bring in about 5%. So it's not a lot of money. We brought in about $50 this year so far, but it's appreciated. It definitely helps pay bills and eventually it'll add up to or, you know, when we get enough people using gun channels, potentially these things can turn into the kind of scratch we need to get the mobile apps polished and that kind of thing. So anyway, I don't mention it enough, but those are permanent links that are down here on the main page. For both Is it there on Amazon? Uh, there's Amazon ones. I don't have a permanent one. I'll put a permanent Amazon one there too, though. Yeah, I think the permanent, because I had a search when I bought my book off Amazon. I had a search for that on gun channels for like ever to find it. Oh, okay. Thanks for bringing that up. I'll post that there sooner and later then. But yeah, we do appreciate that. They, Amazon brings in about 5% also. In fact, Amazon, if you don't bring in enough referrals, they kick you out of the system. So you can always appreciate Amazon stuff. All right, I just saw that people were talking about getting that lead turret press, so I figured I'd throw it out there in case you can get it over at uh, Brownells or someplace. Uh, if it's the same price as buying it somewhere else, it's not like they charge you more. Hopefully, you still get it at a sale or some kind of discount, and then they just give us a 5% cut for sending you there. Oh, yeah, and Brownells, uh, if you go to gun.deals, they list all of Brownells. You can go click on the coupon, uh, the coupon button and then just go down to Brownells' name and click on Brownells. And then it shows you all the active coupons, and there'll, there'll be a lot of coupons in there that currently aren't advertised on Brownell's site. And uh, so, in fact, most of the coupons I've used when I've bought stuff from Brownell's has been off of that website, the gun deals. So it's like uh, something. Yeah. So, so, so go get the coupon code from there, and then come to Gun Channels and click on the link to Brownell's, and then get what you want, and then you'll get the best deal. So that's like if something like a. Uh, discount in a newsletter or like at some special thing and then somebody will take that coupon code and share it with everybody over on a site like that so that you kind of see the accumulation of all their different active coupon codes yeah exactly you know because brown nails will send out coupon codes sometimes in mailers and with their catalog and stuff that they don't advertise on their website and then that's how if you you know cur currently aren't getting a catalog from brown nails well that's how you can figure out what that coupon code was Yeah, sometimes, like, especially a big company, I can imagine they'll, like, okay, we got too many things at one warehouse. So they'll maybe put out a coupon code, you know, close to that warehouse. But you could still technically order the thing with the coupon code. They just don't want everybody to know about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. So then uh, we'll move into, we don't have a gun of the day, or I mean a gun move. Well, we don't have a gun of the day. We haven't done a gun move, gun of the day forever. So I'm going to say potatoes can pick the gun of the day, but the gun movie will come from the gun channel side. So somebody that's watching over on the gun channel side, um, not necessarily the first one. I'll probably let Dead Horse pick the movie out of the ones that get mentioned over there. But we do try to figure out a, or talk about a gun-related movie each day, and uh, we'll start digging into the gun shop of the day. So one of the reasons we do the shop or the show on a regular basis is so that we can talk about gun shops. And uh, one of the ones that's, uh, that I've been a fan of for a while now is BMC out of Albuquerque. Uh, we, me and Bob stopped by there. Um, we were driving around the Arizona and New Mexico. I think we were headed up to check out the Red Dawn locations. We had tried to go, we tried to go to a um, gun show in New Mexico and it turned out that it didn't happen. So we drove all the way over middle of nowhere to find out that the gun show wasn't there. And uh, we went up to Albuquerque. I think we had a, a day, an extra day because of that. And uh, as we were driving up and talking about it on Instagram and stuff, these guys invited us over, which was great because I forget. Oh, I think what it was is we had Bob's camper with his truck and then two dogs and the old van. Right? So, um, oh, no, I had the cop car. So um, we didn't want to have to drive Bob's camper all around town. We were going to look at, like, I think we ended up looking at 18 gun shops in Albuquerque. So uh, they were nice enough to let us uh, park Bob's camper there with the dogs and then book around uh, town a lot easier in just the cop car, which is how we were able to get to 18 of them. I think they also stayed open for a little bit to let us get back late, and uh, just nice guys. So every time I go to Albuquerque now, I stop by. Uh, they've got some full auto stuff. they got an interesting store. They're one of the few stores that sells patches. I think one of these pictures in here 
will show the the number of patches they've got. Uh, they have their own, which is cool, but then they also carry, you know, some of the more uh, cool, trendy, whatever you want to call, like, you know, cool morale patches. And uh, they've got racks of them. And they'll set up at the gun shop, uh, gun shows with all those patches. So it's, uh, it's a pretty cool shop, kind of unique. Uh, they started out as a junkyard, like an auto parts and junkyard, rebuilding cars and stuff. And then it was uh, this, the dad, the son built a little room in one of the front sheds to do FFL work. And as it grows, you know, the story, it's now uh, predominantly the gun shop. And then it's actually spread out. It's the entire front of the property is the gun shop. And then there's a couple of vehicles in back now. So it's kind of a cool story. And it's uh, you know, a family run thing. Like I said, good people. They're, they're nice guys. They're always on the Instagram doing cool stuff and uh, doing neat things for New Mexico and Albuquerque. Anytime there's some kind of a civic event they're usually involved not just gun stuff but just in general the fire departments and and whatnot they've even got some manufacturing going on now that i'm thinking about it so it's really interesting shop and uh and one of the reasons we go around looking for gun shops to find out stuff like this and share them with everybody any chance you guys have been there by any chance no i haven't it's just that's one of the things we don't ask enough but uh we're going to be going back and hitting uh, some of the shops, because I'm not traveling right now, not experiencing new shops, so we'll go back and cover some of the others. And, uh, well, I'm curious if anybody uh, has been or visited one of the shops that we talk about, you know, certainly chime in. And if you want, jump into the show and let us know about it. This dead horse is Instagram. What's that? That's your Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's my Instagram. Nice. So now you don't even have to do the reloading. That's my wife out there reloading ammo. <laughs> so. Right on. So uh, let's see. We said we we're going to look for a movie out there, and I'm seeing what kind of responses we get. Um, is Public Enemies a movie? I guess we've got one over there. Yeah. Yeah. Public Enemies is a movie with Johnny Depp and uh, Christian Bale about uh, be, uh John Dillinger and uh, Babyface. Uh, oh, Babyface. Like, baby uh, what's his name? I can't. And Pretty Boy Floyd and uh, Babyface. Nelson. Nelson, yeah. So, uh, uh, these gangsters. Yeah, yeah. It's about the feds taking them down. Christian Bell plays that. I only saw that movie once. I never saw it. I haven't seen it more than once, so it's. And I saw it probably like right after it came out. So it's kind of, it's been probably seven years or something. It's been a while, but uh, Chris, I remember Christian Bell played uh, like the federal agent that was like trying to take them down, right? Like he was trying to take down the, you know, John Dillinger and all that, Babyface Nelson. Dude, have so, you seen that? No, I've never seen it. I remember it was pretty good. It's the same as like you're saying. I've seen it whenever it came out, probably, or soon after, maybe on VHS. I forget when it came out, but uh, or maybe DVD or something, but not since. I think it came out about seven or eight years ago. It's not that old, but it's been a while since it did come out. So. Oh, it's that oh, recent? So maybe I'm thinking yeah. of a movie. I'm thinking of something from the VHS days. Yeah, no, the Public Enemies is, uh, and not unless the, not unless the one I'm thinking of is a remake of an older one. <laughs> like that's possible, but uh, Public Enemies that I know had Christian Bale in it, the Batman guy, you know. So yeah, two thousand. <laughs> I have not seen this movie. Yeah, it was pretty good. It really was. I I remember it being really good, but I I never saw it a second time. Right on. Well, got Thompson in this. It looks like. Oh yeah, it's got a bunch of 1911s and 38 revolvers and Thompsons, and I think it has a Browning BAR in it. And uh, I can't remember what else was in it, but I think it had a Browning BAR and a Thompson and uh, and uh, 1911s and 38 revolvers. <laughs> so. Bruce did the saying, good movie, one hard thumb and one soft thumb, but still two thumbs. I don't know if he's talking about Public Enemies or the one that he suggested. So, Lockjaw saying Public Enemies was filmed in Wisconsin, but he still hasn't seen it. 
has uh, Mal- has Mausers in it. it has uh, 1897 shotguns. It has Colt uh, model 1922 machine guns. Um, it has a bunch, yeah, a bunch of guns in it. <laughs> Definitely 1902 Colts, uh, 1903 Colts, Colt official police, Colts, uh, police positive, detective specials, military. What like do with the uh, gun of the or the movie of the day is incorporated into the red tube or <laughs> the gun tube? How we've been watching uh, the videos over there off uh, Night Strikes Gun Tube and. Uh, I would like to maybe figure out a way to do like a, I don't want to call it a bracket, but somehow a poll maybe because polls are better, and then uh, um, have people vote and then watch that one at the end of the week. So maybe I can do that. Maybe the five gun movies of the uh, during the week, we'll put those in a poll, and then whichever one gets the vote, we'll uh, watch that one on Friday. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. So if people want to start suggesting movies for that concept, then maybe it's something obscure. Maybe it's something if you've got the DVD, um, like I was thinking of Nine Rota. Do you guys remember that one? Or Rota Nine, I guess, depending on. It's anyway, it's Ninth Company. It's the Russian Red Dawn, basically. Like I've. I don't think I've ever heard of it. Oh, it's you never seen that one. That one we've talked about it before. I thought, but uh, maybe it's worth talking about that one again. Um, it's. I shouldn't say Red Dawn. It's the Russian platoon. So it basically follows a group of recruits that get, uh, well, they, they enlist, and then they go through basic, and what it's like in weird Russian basic, and it's all weird. And then they go to Afghanistan, and oh, just an incredible movie with all real guns. So imagine if Russia made a, a version of platoon or kind of apocalypse now platoon, like high-level, well-made, just accurate firearms and everything really really fun to watch uh just for the ak's and the clash and the cops the svds but um it's all in german or they're all in russian so you got to read it um and i think i might have an english dubbed copy of it too though so something like that might be tough to find even on the video sites online so if people want movies like that or some old western or something cool maybe we can put those into the movies of the day and then try to think, think about that we watched a crazy weird one I talked about it the other day the guy Maxim the son of the machine gun guy right the guy who invented the suppressor he wrote a book about his relationship with his dad and then that book was made into a movie in the 1940s and we watched that the other night and pink found that one online so that was a weird movie <laughs> and uh, it was be- it was about the kid who invented the suppressor when he was like 0 to 12 years old so it was not necessarily about the suppressor at all. Definitely not about the machine gun. It was a, it was a movie. So, what's the criteria for people to uh, recommend a movie? Just that it be a gun movie? Yeah, it has to be a gun movie. Uh, it can be science fiction. I'm okay with that, but uh, nothing weird. So, I mean, if it's weird, we just won't put it on the list. That's what happens when it's free country. Um, but people have always given us good ones. I mean, I could go back and pick movies. We have a ton, of, literally a ton. I Usually when we make the show notes, we keep the old ones. So everything that we've always done on the, we're going on 600 episodes now, um, we have probably 400 episodes easily worth of notes. So I could go back and grab movies. I just figure if we're going to start doing it as a kind of an event thing, then let's go through some movies people want to watch instead of just movies I pick randomly out of the list, right? Yeah, no, that, that's a good idea. And I like the whole doing it as a poll at the end. Like, yeah, that's awesome. That's... Yeah, it's a good concept. With that, we'll move into the next thing. I'm going to bring up a couple of requests. So we've got the shows over on iTunes again. And that's no small feat. I yeah, figured out how to do it for cheap instead of having to pay good money for it. And that's important because now I can start doing some of the others. I've already got the van chat up on iTunes. I'm going to be putting Every Second Matters back on iTunes. Uh, I'd like to do a Best of Gun Channels iTunes account for the guys that are doing stuff that just don't care about doing an iTunes thing or don't have the facilities to do it. We do have those facilities on gun channels. And if I can 
get that set up and ideally get somebody to help out with doing it. Then we've got a whole channel on iTunes that's just letting people know the cool stuff that happens. I mean, you guys know, talked about it earlier. There's every once in a while a diamond worth of free, you know, uh, live chat, or sometimes a, a, a whatever, you know, one of these produce shows or whatever is just insane, awesome. So, uh, you know, for a while there, we had an iTunes thing called the Best of Gun Channels. It just cost eighty-five dollars a month, and I had to quit doing it, but. Uh, now we should be able to do that a little bit cheaper and uh, we'll effort towards that. So with, with that said, I do have this show over on iTunes and I keep putting the request out there. I think we've got six reviews now, so we do appreciate that. Our goal is to have something like 60, though, so that we can compete with some of the bigger gun ch uh, chats out there. After 600 episodes, you know, Bob's up there doing his thing. I'm hoping he'll come back. But when he does, he's not coming back to put on a suit and tie and to get a microphone and for us to be sitting in some kind of you know, studio that keeps every time you see the studio, it's got more stuff in it, right? Our goal is to just have a conversation about guns. And I'd like to try putting that conversation about guns up in front of people on iTunes. Uh, I get the same frustration with iTunes and listening to podcasts as I do when I watch YouTube videos. I'm not trying to be a radio station and I don't want to listen to people who are trying to be a radio station. I find that annoying and I just don't like it, right? I'd much rather listen to a live chat where there's dead air once in a while. Or where people get in a fight and it's kind of ugly because that's real life, right? And we all figure out how to deal with that. That's much more interesting to me and much more satisfying as far as learning and discovering stuff than any kind of pre-programmed garbage. Most of that stuff costs so much money to produce. There's an agenda. And if, even if it's just, you know, buy stuff from our store, whatever stuff it is, you're still buying stuff. So, um, you know, my goal is going to continue to be crowdfunding, have everybody throw a couple of bucks in. I don't need that much money. Gun Channels doesn't need that much money. But um, anyway, we do appreciate the people that go over to the iTunes for now. Leave us some comments. It's that kind of stuff that will get this show up there. And hopefully uh, people will discover the show that just kind of sloppy show. People chat about guns. And when it's important, we get on topic and we chat about guns. Um, you know, hopefully that will be something that people are interested in. And then it will catch on. I don't want to bug anybody about it. Because really, right now, we're talking to people who don't use iTunes. I don't use iTunes. The goal is to get up there and put the show on iTunes so the people who are using iTunes discover it, and they'll do the work of sharing it on iTunes. But we need to get that kickstart going. You know, we need to get that uh, kind of prime the pump over there, and that's why I keep asking for that, and I figured I'd you know, dig into that one a little bit more tonight. Along with that, I'd like to start up in the quality of the show. I really would like to bring um, some people on to do interviews. My concern is one of the problems, I guess, with doing it kind of sloppy like this is who wants to be on an interview show that's super sloppy. So I'm going to kind of, you know, ride the, the edge of that one and see what happens. But to kind of spruce the show up a little bit, give it a little bit more production value without going crazy, I'd like to ask the listeners, anybody that's interested in doing a little demo or some sort of a, what do they call it, thing, a transition between segments or something, do like a little introduction to the member of the day. You want to do it as a jingle if you just want to say it. Uh, think of what Ghost has his kid doing. Like, I don't have a kid to make him, make him do it, right? You guys do, or you guys that know people, or maybe you know somebody who's interested in, you know, acting or doing voice talent or something. Um, we're interested in a, a couple of things. I'd like to make the show a little bit nicer, but I'd also like to get some of those people on gun channels to do the comics and the cartoons and some of the other stuff. If, there's, if I need somebody to do voice talent, I'm guessing other people could appreciate that too. So if it's something we can slap them $5 on PayPal for helping us out, Maybe you know somebody who's a kid that can has a good voice or is funny or can do something with some computer stuff to make it um, make a couple of bucks. And if that can help everybody out, bring all of our channels up a little bit better, that's one of the goals of collaboration. Right? So anyway, I'm going to put that out there. If anybody has uh, some ideas for uh, collaborations, you might listen to the end of the show. Every single show, we have Charles Heller doing that outtake. That was I wrote that down one time. I thought that was a quick concise way of summarizing the philosophy of gun websites and uh, the crew at the time and still and uh, Charles is a radio guy and he's a friend of ours so I went over to his house one time and he recorded that for us and then it took him like an hour and a half to record that because he's a radio guy so it had to be perfect and then he gave it to us and I've just been using that ever since oh I think maybe five years ago or something I put a request out there and Hosh and Osio SMC and a couple other people Eddie with a firearm uh, all made some audios and sent them in. 
Uh, I just don't have them all handy as much anymore. They all just say the same thing. So if anybody would like to be part of that and have uh, a segment of the show or something introduced by you, then, uh, I don't know, do it, uh, produce it, put it on uh, Gun Channels, send it to me in an email. If you don't know how to do it, get with somebody on Gun Channels. I'm sure most of the people over there who are creating content are going to know how to help you out with getting audio made. Uh, if I'm around, you can ask, but probably as simple as open up the... Uh, audio recorder on a Windows machine, saying stuff at your computer until it sounds right, and then just tell them that file to save and then attach it to an email. Worst that happens is it's, you know, sort of what we need, and then we can ask you to do it a little bit different or, you know, make it shorter, make it longer. Anyway, hope if you're interested, have some fun with it. And uh, if you're not, then look forward to hopefully some of that being on a part of the show here in the future. All right, this one, Angelina's not here. There's always dead air. I get sick of talking. So um, I guess we're <laughs> thing I had here. Uh, we are doing the workshop tomorrow, so anybody that wants to uh, discuss your two-way projects, I really would like to talk about the podcasting. Well, really, I used to pay $85 a month for that. I was looking at $35 a month or $39 a month to post this show for five days a month, a week basically. And then it was like $7 a month if I just posted one day, one, like four episodes a month. That was going to kill me. I didn't want to have to chop this show down to one day a month or four times a month. And I didn't want to, I couldn't afford $39 a month. So uh, I was all psyched that I figured out a way to uh, get it done on the cheap. And I've talked to Night Strike. So we have ways that if you're going to create some kind of a website out there um, and you were planning on doing something that was going to get you to web our podcasting, uh, Night Strike's uh, web hosting packages will do all of that for you. So anybody that wants to learn that stuff, I'm interested in teaching it. Night Strike's interested in providing the service so that he can make a couple of bucks for GunTube. And uh, anyway, so that's that's something that's out there, but I know that we're not going to be able to do a whole show on just that. So uh, any projects you have, we'll talk about them. And I don't know if we'll start doing that weekly, but I will do them weekly if we can get enough people interested in doing 2A projects that have questions. Um, it would be great if Clover could get in there on a regular basis. Night Strike's got some knowledge. Al, some of the other guys that know coding and stuff. Um, you know, we should be able to offer resources that you can't buy. Seriously, unless you got money, you're not paying for that kind of knowledge set. And uh, certainly it would be cool to see what people do with some uh, some more skills or at least some more uh, help. Oh, and I'm, you know, and I have a ton of questions about stuff like that that I would love to talk to people about, like Clover about and all that, like guys I know about, uh, you know, cameras and filming and for my gun room, like what color paint should I paint on my walls? What kind of light bulbs do I want? Multi um, you know, what's that? Multicam, dip the room in multicam and then infrared LED bulbs. <laughs> yeah, so I like, yeah, so I, I, you know, and so anyone out there that knows anything about, you know, like video work, like what, like what kind of paint on your walls makes the best kind of videos and what kind of lighting you should have and stuff like that. I'm interested, like, you know, like I'm totally down to talk about that because I don't know anything about it. So I'm down to learn. So when I, so I do mine the right way. Right well, so that'll be tomorrow in the afternoon. I've got the poll out there on the main page of Gun Channels. It might have got stuck down anytime there's a poll. You just go to gunchannels.com slash polls, and you'll see all of them there. If you want to create your own, feel free. Any member of Gun Channels can make a poll. It's kind of a nice way to uh, get input from anybody, really, about uh, ideas you might have or different uh, topics for a show or something. So... Uh, Let's see, tomorrow will be early watch. We'll see if Tony's around tomorrow. We'll uh, be here to talk about what's going on in the news. Just kind of, after that, Knives usually has a room going uh, with the live conversation. Uh, tomorrow is Tuesday. So I think the thing is already switched out over there. I have it set to automatically switch now. I think it happens at like 9 p.m. for me. So tomorrow will be... Uh, Hanging with the outlaw at 6 p.m. 
Tactical Tuesday with Ghost at 8 p.m. Eastern. And then uh, Night Strike and Smeggy do that hit or miss show occasionally on Tuesdays at 9. Uh, this is, I think there's a 10 o'clock show on Tuesdays that somebody doesn't have in here. And then we'll be back here tomorrow at midnight. Uh, Dead Horse, you got anything coming up for tomorrow? Um, let's see here. Uh, tomorrow we're uh, just doing that 2A project, right? I'm going to plan on jumping in the chat with you um, with that. And then uh, I got a show until on Thursday at about uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. I missed your show Thursday. Did you guys get back into 5.56 history? No, no, we didn't. Uh, I, my voice was still pretty bad. And uh, it's on the, it's pretty, it's like, I'd say it's back up to like 90% right now. So like, it's definitely gotten a lot better, but my voice was still pretty hoarse and pretty bad. So we just had an open lobby discussion about guns and stuff. Right on. Is, you got anything going on? You doing a potato tube tonight? Uh, yeah, I'll probably run a tater tube when this is over. Looks like Russ is out there, so we'll see if maybe he's going to be doing a movie. I know he did one earlier. I was watching a chunk of that before Ghost or before Clover started up. I think it was back that early, and uh, it was a weird one. So, um, I saw that post. Is it like garlic and gunpowder or something? Like it was. It was. I a, wonder what that was about. Like it sounded weird. It was kind of a strange 60s. Have you ever seen like those 60s biker movies where they're like kind of cheap, oh, yeah. kind of like a spaghetti western, but bikers? It was kind of like that. It was like, I think it was inexpensively made, but certainly not well acted. Oh, um, yeah. Really stiff actors. New actors, probably. Anyway, that was interesting, and I don't know what's going to be going on over there, but uh, thanks to Night Strike for uh, creating the gun tube. It is certainly is awesome, and... Uh, Stay tuned for what goes on in the community, right? There's all kinds of interesting stuff happening, and uh, it's a good time to be interested in this stuff. And if you're creating content, it certainly is a challenging time, but, man, there's all kinds of potential here. There's no Hickox on GunStreamer. There's no, uh, well, there's a nothing fancy on YouTube, but he certainly ain't the size he ever was over on the, the other one. And uh, nobody's nothing on GunTube yet. Oh, I guess yeah, no. I'm on the show here. I'm like, okay, that's the end. I'm done talking. Except I gotta do it. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna start doing a new thing too. Um, at the end of the show here, or at some point in the show, if anybody's got anything out in the uh, the chats to throw out there, uh, please do so we don't miss anything. Um, I want to take a minute to actually pay attention to that towards the end. Because um, every once in a while there's something that's actually important and we're bullshitting or just joking around or something or pissed at each other and it just, you know, gets over or blown over. And uh, I don't know. It's tough. How do we get people motivated now when there's no urgency? Because now is when we should be kicking butt. The, the, we're never well, yeah, now is when we should, like, we should not be comfortable and just sitting back and we should be out there repealing the NFA, getting uh, national concealed carry, right? Like, we should uh, now's the time to push more than ever challenge that 43 where they were talking about something earlier today like they were talking about something earlier today about the wait times for the nfa or something and somebody was saying was it you somebody was saying that they were going to hire more people at the was it, me? was it you i don't know i was listening to somebody no, no, it wasn't me. was it me but somebody was saying how they don't have any more, uh, they, they have so many, maybe it was Pawnery, they have so many, uh, what am I trying to say, the word, um, agents, or not, the, they're not agents, though, the, the people that push papers. The, processor, the processor. Processor. About that. Uh, they have so many of those people, period, and that they don't, they don't have any intention of hiring more. And I'm sitting here yelling at the screen, of course they don't. It's freaking, who wants more of them? You don't want more nfa you want less we want no nfa we don't want more processing we don't want it to be easier to file the 200 hundred dollar tax stamp we want the scrutiny on if it's necessary so then he said something i think it was potter he said something like there's only two for all of texas like two examiners that's what i was looking for examiners for all of texas and that may be because i know they do them in kind of zones or whatever because at first it was just 
five examiners or whatever for the whole country. And so it'd be like, oh, let me look up the Texas laws tomorrow. Let me look up Connecticut's laws. At some time they figured out, oh, okay, if I'm going to do Texas every day, then I can just learn the Texas stuff and you can just go learn the Connecticut stuff, which I'm still not a big fan of. I want it to be difficult for the government. I don't want the government's job to be easy ever. I want them to be under scrutiny and uh, in fear of their, you know, need always. Anyhow, they were suggesting that it was frustrating because there's only a few examiners for such a large number of uh, stuff. And that's where, you know, we should be scrutinizing that. That should be like the, the biggest angle right there. You're, you're doing all this work to prohibit people from just purchasing a can like we purchase a pistol grip or like we purchase a spring or like we purchase ammo, which is all it is, is another accessory to a firearm. It doesn't in any way, shape or form make it more deadly or more easy to carry around or any of the things that you're afraid of. So we should be uh, using those number of uh, background checks that oh. come up with absolutely nothing. They do absolutely nothing. They have no, no result at all, no positive result. The only thing they do is create jobs for the processing people and for the enforcement and regulatory people. And I guess they're printing paper somewhere, right? And then somebody's paying to move that paper around. But aside from that, it's burden on, on the regulatory side for the gun shop. It's horrible burden on the manufacturer's end. It's an infringement on us and all of us. And that's the kind of shit that we should be petitioning, not just for the HPA. I don't want the HPA. I want the I want 44, 3, 73 scrutinized. I want the 68 scrutinized. The NFA, like, come on, we got enough organizations. We got enough people. We can all do more than one thing at a time. You know, this is the time we need to get people jazzed, but I don't know how to do it, especially when there's only 10 people watching they, like this. Well, I think we also and, need to be taken to approach that they're discriminating towards us. They want us deaf. They want us not to be able to hear and us to have hearing damage. They don't care about our hearing. Yeah. And, uh, yes, we don't want you shoot because we can hear it. We don't want you having a suppressor because then we can't hear it. So, exactly. Yeah. In Europe, even with their strict gun controls, suppressors are sold in like blister packs. They're not even regulated in Europe. Like, what does that tell you? It's crazy considering even anything, every text that they write has its own uniqueness so special that it needs to be claimed off the server because your identity is also a, a right. So, uh, yeah, Europe. Let's not. Let's, let's end the show. We got all kinds of stuff accomplished tonight. I think it was a pretty good show. Thanks, guys, for jumping in. Thanks to the people from Patreon who make it all possible. I can't say that enough. I mean, there is no other income sources. The, the Patreon is keeping all these projects going. And um, oh, I've been sitting here not getting exit music going. Does anybody have a quote by any chance? Got a gun of the day. Oh, yeah, you were going to read my gun of the day. Try to get out of here without doing that. <laughs> Uh, the HK VP70 or the VP70Z. It's a uh, first polymer frame striker fired handgun. It was the it was first came out in 1970. Uh, basically, if H and K made a double stack high point with an 18 pound trigger, this is it. Uh, is the crappiest gun I've ever really wanted, really bad. Uh, the sights are really weird. It's got like this ramp with a groove cut in the front, like in the middle, and then uh, like a dovetail in the back. And then overseas, we only got a few of them here, and good luck finding one. But there was the model that had a butt stock, and it was select fire, had three round burst. Uh, pretty cool gun, I think. The gun That's went normal. into that too. It was the holster, right? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I couldn't tell you. I think it went in there. You ever shot one? No, I've never shot one. I've handled one, but I've never shot one. Ed Orr, you ever shot one of these things? No, I've never even seen one in person. <laughs> I've only ever played with the one we went out and shot it. It was definitely interesting. Uh, I would never pay for what they wanted, and I probably would not have bought one back in the day because it's so weird looking. Because remember, this is pre like Ruger's even. This was one of the this was the first polymer. Yeah, first polymer striker fired. And, uh, okay. I don't think it was the first polymer, but it was the first polymer striker fired. I don't remember it back when it first came out because I would have just overlooked it. Even, I mean, when you, you're like, a, 
you're right, it's crude or whatever. It's still HK, though. I mean, it's very well made. They are well made, and they're supposed to be really accurate. I don't know about that, because like you say, the trigger's insane. You can just tell by looking at the trigger. It's a, it's a, yeah, the trigger's hard, but it's a blow, straight blowback design. So, I mean, if you're... you got to have some finger strength. But if you hold it steady, it'll hit where you point it. Very good. So what, Forgotten Weapons played this yesterday or something? What? Forgotten Weapons had this on yesterday or something? That's usually mm, No. I think he does have a video on it, but it's been out for years. I don't know. Do you have a quote then? No. Nope. I got a quote. I do not. Right on. I got one. And then we'll end it. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Go ahead, end it. All right. Um, a free man must not be told how to think, either by the government or by social activists. He may certainly be shown the right way, but he must not accept being forced into it. Jeff Cooper. And I'll do that without the mute on. The guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching gunwebsites. I remember the day the girls came over for bridge club. I was so embarrassed because of lingering odors. Fish for dinner last night? Still smoking the cigars? And now we'll say something just so we don't get copyright strike. Christ, did a cow shit in here? Well, I don't know.